apps. You might be wondering what kind of apps could I really build on Bubble? Um, what, how powerful is this? What flexibility do I really have? Um, is it as easy as everyone says it is? Um, and trying to figure out, you know, what can I realistically build on this thing? And if you if you think about kind of complex things like say Salesforce, Salesforce is very complex. Salesforce probably can't be fully replicated inside a bubble um, just because it's been built for years and years and years and years hard coded to do, to be extremely flexible. Um, what you can do is build a CRM yourself. You could build a CRM that has things specific for a company. So you could reach out to companies, you could have a CRM template that you build and you could build one for them that has something custom for a specific process they have. You could also create CRMs that might be for specific industries. So you can create it so that you have things, right? So you could have a company and then you could have people that are attributed to the company and you could designate the company as a prospect for sales reps to call a customer so they would know that they've already sold them things and you could have all kinds of things that you can track on these and you can display that data very easily um, just like in any other CRM. You could take that, grow from there, right? You could take that and you could say, what kind of data are we going to put in? Well, if we're selling something, I probably want to track those sales, right? So we're going to track our sales data and there are two inside of our CRM, but maybe we want to track inventory. Maybe we're selling a physical product. So now we can track that because it's all numbers, right? We're you're inter entering a product that you have, filling out certain data fields, you can put that in as a thing. You're entering how much of it you sold, you're entering a quantity. You're removing that quantity from the available product. And then you can go from there and just kind of grow inside of what you're thinking about doing. So, right? so maybe you start, you build something simple where you can go in and you can track information about specific customers. You have the ability to enter customers, you have the ability to add a person to a company, you have the ability to add notes under that company, you have the ability to go in and schedule follow-ups with that company. Um, and that's just kind of lays groundwork for you, right? So if you wanted to do something like that, you could easily pull that off. It just takes you know the legwork of figuring out how to make things display the way you want them to. And being that it is visual, it makes it a whole lot easier to kind of paint that picture for yourself as you're building. Where Bubble really shines is basically anything where you have a form submit. So anything that you have forms that you want to have people fill out to track things. So when I think of that, I think of anything that has to do with, you know, regulatory, um, something with compliance that a company has to track something, or even the checklist or something, right? So like a checklist that a company has to go through. If you built out a way to make a dynamic checklist where they can fill out those checklists and log those checklists and they can fill those checklists out day after day after day after day. You know, companies will pay to be able to track that stuff and larger companies will pay a lot for it. You can give companies the ability to go in and upload videos into Bubble and then share those videos with other employees. Um, it really just depends on what you want to do with it. It's so malleable. So you could build an app that basically allows people to share files. You can have an app set up in a way that allows multiple companies to access it with different kind of settings and basically use it in completely different ways. It depends on how, how flexible the system you built and how malleable you make it and how many settings you put in. So for instance, I built, um, one on one track here and one on one track, it allows companies to be able to go in and track their one-on-ones, right? So they can see all their old last one-on-ones, they can see their next, their current kind of employee data, the general information doesn't change, what their goals and stuff are, and then, you know, enter data for their new one-on-one. -on -one. So that next time they have that to reference. You got like five or 10 people under you, it's hard to track what you talked about a week or two ago, but this makes it super easy. And I built this specifically for my own use. And then I just put it online. But with this, it gives the ability to do more tracking, right? So if I click here and show a bit more of that, but I'm pulling charts from this. I'm tracking data. I introduced a portion where you can track projects. And 
added email automation. And I built my first app and launched it within three months of starting to learn Bubble. And that just shows you how easy Bubble is to learn and it shows you know, how flexible it is. It really didn't take that much effort to learn because it was all so simple to use. So when you're, when you're thinking about different apps and stuff that you can make, you're thinking about how you could utilize it. Think about what kind of data are people entering? What kind of things do people want to track? How can you add efficiency? And how can you um, even create maybe triggers inside of a company that would let them know? So maybe person A completes a task, he sends an email to their boss, their boss can then see it. Or maybe it's a system where everyone's always working in it, right? Maybe they're entering sales orders throughout the day. And every time something gets completed, right? So say a sales rep closes a deal one, then you want to have a trigger shoot an email to their boss. And it says, hey, this deal closed so they can review it. Or maybe it goes into a queue. Right, so maybe the sales rep marks it closed one, but the real on the back end it actually says closed one pending review is like the stage it's really in. And then the manager goes in and approves it for sale or approves it to be added, that it is 100% correct, this is real, that we're doing it. Maybe you have a system for quality control under sales like that. And you can do different kind of views on that. So you can designate, you know, maybe you want some employees to see one thing and other employees to see another. And Bubble allows you to filter that. So if I create different employee groups, I can have an employee group that might be admin and an employee group that might just be team member. So I have admins and team members. Whenever I add someone to the comp to my organization, they're added as an admin or a team member. The admins log in, they're sent because ad they're an admin, they're sent to the admin page where they have the ability to add new employees. They have the ability to change settings. They have the ability to add new information or delete information. And then maybe I have employees. Employees have are sent to the employee page where they're able to click on and view information, maybe hit certain triggers to send information to their managers, but they're not able to actually change data. They're not able to enter employee, new employees. They're restricted. And you can restrict that access very easily within Bubble just by changing different search parameters because you just add filters. And once you learn the ability to just quickly add a filter for, you know, this person doesn't need to see this if they are not an admin. So username or user role equal admin, then this is visible. It's a very th simple thing to add. And you can do that for so many things that you can really create a very customized look by depending on who's actually using the app. You have sites like Income that was built, that's income, I-N-C-O-M-E-E, -E, dot co. And this was built to help uh, with making sure you can do invoices easily, right? So you get a lot of freelancers that they need to be able to do invoices and be able to accept payments online. And they need to be able to have invoices that they send out and receive, but they don't need like a whole accounting system. They basically just need the ability to send and receive invoices. And they're basically, their financial practices are super simple, but with income, they're able to achieve that very easily. It was all built on Bubble. You also have apps like Teaming. Teaming is for team management and communication. So you're gonna be able to go in, collaborate, engage, present, and work with your team better. That is the idea here. So it's actually similar to one-on-one -on -one track, but with more focus on active team communication. So you might actually have conversations in here with your team members, you know, via chat, and then it helps to facilitate meetings with each other. But it's also a good example of some limitations of Bubble, right? So if you look here, it says share your screen, and they advertise, you know, present text, images, video, vote, have have meetings together. But it says we utilize these to help, you know, use your own system, just use us to share a link. But it's an it's it's a good way to get around it, right? Most companies can't do everything. You shouldn't expect your app to be able to do everything. You should understand that you're going to have to find creative ways around different functionalities because having a video chat company is a whole thing in and of itself. It's very complex to build a video chat, web chat company where you're going to constantly be hosting all these video chats. And it's a lot harder to have something like that from the ground up than it is to have an app that would just be you know, text chat. 
another one built on Bubble is Vestin. Vestin is actually a community for entrepreneurs. So it is a place for entrepreneurs to come meet each other, find help from each other, and uh, just grow network and find people to invest, right? So you can build social media type sites on here. You can build invoicing sites on here. You can build team sites on here. There's all kinds of stuff that you can really do. And then there's stuff like Sparkly. Sparkly is meant for an online survey tool, right? So you've got questions, you send them out. Um, and the key here is you're not trying to reinvent the wheel with anything when you're building stuff. Typically people come in and it's like, I want to be the only one that made this. And it's a blue ocean strategy, it's called, right? You want to be the first one in the ocean. Well, the first one in the ocean usually finds out that the boat sinks. And here's how you don't build a boat. Um, you can, if you take a look at something other people are doing, right? You can make adjustments to it and you can have your own come out and like there's already a market for it. It's established. You can see what people are doing and how to make it better. And that's similar to what this is doing, right? So Sparkly isn't anything new. It's not some new type of thing. There have been tons of things that have come out where it's just online surveys, right? I think of SurveyMonkey. Use that a dozen times. This is a similar tool. It just does it in a little bit different way. It has a lot of stuff that has to do with pictures, but they built it on Bubble. And you can build something similar. And if you take a quick look just through all these sites, they all look just a little bit different. They all look modern, they look nice, but you can't tell that this was made all in the same program by comparison to, say, anything else. Bulls are very powerful. If you're thinking about doing anything that has to do with you know, entering data, utilizing that data, um, encourage you to look at Bubble, use Bubble, learn it. There's a whole bunch of tutorials to help you get started. There's even stuff on like learning how to build Twitter. So trust their documentation. And there's a huge um, community out there. So part of what got me through my first few weeks of learning Bubble was actually running into people uh, online that taught me some stuff. Um, I had some problems with charts, which is actually why I made my first video about Bubble, um, which was how to make charts, which I remade once I learned how to make charts better. But I had a hard time finding it, so I started making videos on it. Um, but you know, when you struggle, you'll you'll find people. There's a strong community of builders out there. If you like this video, there is a link in the description that has a link to a course I have on Udemy that goes over a lot more stuff about Bubble, um, building charts, building different things, um, a quick little CRM that we build inside of one of the courses, or in the, in the course, in the link, and the link has a uh, coupon in it, so it's heavily discounted in there for anyone that came from YouTube. So if you're interested, go there. If not, totally cool. Hope you have a great day. Hope you're a happy builder.